Uh, my name is Richard Few, I am founder and chief geek at SalesGeek. A lot of people, when it comes to selling, they don't behave, they don't behave in the way that they would want to be sold to. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about neuroscience today, so the science of how the brain works rather than the psychology of how the brain works. A recent Harvard study suggested that over 90% of our daily decisions are made in our animal brain. We go out into the market and most of our USPs and most of our pitch to the outside market, both for salespeople but also through marketing, collateral and copy on websites, etc., is focused at the human brain, the logical, rational brain. Here's a logical and rational reason to come and buy from me. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't work. You're wasting your time. Because if the animal brain says no, you can provide all the logic and rationale you want the answer is no. So I guess what I'm here today to tell you is sell stories, not products. Sell stories, not service. Sell stories are not facts and figures. People don't buy facts and figures. They will use them to rationalize a decision afterwards, but it's not at the core part of their decision-making process. Your absolute secret weapon when it comes to speaking to the, the animal brain or the chimp is anecdotes. Whatever you do for a living, whatever products you sell, whatever product you make, whatever service you deliver, you'll have stories, you'll have anecdotal stories about that, about customers, about case studies, about a way in which you've fixed a problem for somebody. That's what people want to hear. They don't want to hear that you're 3p cheaper than the other dude four doors down the high street. So the survival instinct kicks in and kicks out and says, I'm not interested. I'd rather pay a little bit more and go and buy it from there. And that's why there is still department stores that exist on the high street, like John Lewis, as a really good example. They almost have no right to survive in the current economy, but there is a generation of people in society who absolutely trust that brand with their life. And if it means paying a couple of pounds more or a couple of pence more, they will go with it. So the message for me before I hand over to Finchie is, it's not you, it's them. <laughs> survival instinct. Get yourself around the survival instinct by building trust, being part of their community, and, and appeal to animal brain. And our animal brain ultimately will allow us to want to engage with people that we trust, people that we like, and people that we've got to know over a period of time, like family and like friends. And for us, the best brands on the planet right now, the best salespeople that we've ever worked with, are amazing at building relationships. But in relationships are embedded in the limbic system, the animal brain, and not the logic and rationale brain. So part the stats and start telling stories. We are on the, the edge of a, a complete change and a shift within the industry. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn have all changed the way that we purchase things. Like Rich was saying before with the guy on his phone, People do a lot more research now. They want to feel more familiar. Appealing to the limbic system is something that we can do far before a client ever enters our buying process. And it's changed completely how our buying process works and how it looks. So this is the new buying process that we've put together. Very start of that, people become aware of you. This is so, so important. Awareness doesn't necessarily have to be on Facebook, doesn't necessarily have to be on LinkedIn. It can be at events, meet people at events. You don't necessarily have to sell to people straight away. Getting people aware of your products and your services is so important to make sure that they feel familiar with you. At some point, there will be a trigger point within their business, within their industry, where they go, I need that service. If you're at the forefront of the mind, you're so much more likely to get them into your pipeline. It builds trust with people. Being in front of them, making them aware of what you're doing builds trust. This means that the sales process here starts at this point. So people are entering our pipeline there rather than entering further on. That's great for us. We can either look at this and, and see it's a bad thing, but I see this as a massively positive thing. If we do that first bit correctly, if we're in front of people, if we're making them aware of what we do, we don't actually have to do a lot. The biggest thing that people struggle with in sales is building trust with that client. If you can do that correctly and actually get to them further down in that process, it means that they've already got trust. Trust is the hardest thing to get with a client. If you've just contacted someone out of the blue, you've got a certain amount of time there to actually get that trust with them and make them trust in you and make them believe in you. But if you can do that before they even enter the funnel, all you've got to do is listen to the problems and see if you can solve them. But one of the biggest things within that is getting referrals. If you can find people who absolutely love what you do, it means that they're going to tell other people that they love, that they trust what you do, and it makes things a lot easier. The biggest thing with this is it has to be genuine. 
You can't put yourself out there on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn as something that you're not. Be genuine on Facebook, be genuine on LinkedIn, and be genuine at events when you're meeting people. From that, it makes it a lot easier because all you have to do is identify challenges and you'll actually get people coming in your pipeline asking for your help. You won't have to go out there searching for business. They will come to you and ask for your help, ask for your expertise. From that, it's very simple. You close the deal, you've got a very happy geek at the end of it. One of the things that we find businesses struggle with quite a lot and salespeople struggle with that they aren't doing correctly is marketing back to their existing clients. Your biggest and quickest wins won't be stood in front of you. They'll be stood behind you. It is far easier to convert an existing client into some new business than it is to go out there to the market sector, put all the effort into marketing, getting someone into the pipeline, convincing them to trust you that doesn't know you from someone that you've had previously. So looking backwards can help you move forwards. This will also help you generate, as a business, fans. Fans are so much more important than revenue. If you can get fans within your business and outside, people that are talking about your business, that are looking in at it going, that's a great business to work with, that will really, really help with the referral side of things. People who are fans of stuff, look at Apple, look at Nike. They're far more expensive than any other companies out there, but people rave about them. People camp outside the Apple store for two to three days just to get the iPhone two hours before anyone else. It's mental. If you can build fans, though, that will be your marketing structure and that will put sales into your pipeline. So to leave you, I suppose, on, uh, on three notes, one, look forward, but also make sure that you're looking backwards. Always be looking outwards for fresh business. Create fans, one of the most important things within this. Like I said, be genuine. And three, be your own marketing department. That is a really important one. Make sure that you're branding yourself personally, but you're also branding the business out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.